That cleanup continues at the Kerr McGee site and the surrounding neighborhood, but many of the people in that neighborhood still have some concerns. Our Jory Talley joins us live from the site with more. Jory? The EPA started working with Kerr McGee doing cleanup work while the company was still operating back in the late 90s. Then during the company's bankruptcy, the cleanup work stopped and nothing was being done. Then in 2011, the cleanup work started back again when multi-state trust came to town and they've been here working ever since. And even though they say they're making good progress, the finish line is being measured in years, not weeks or months. Walked many days in the rain breathing creosote and inhaling it. I have a serious sinus problem right now because of exposure to creosote, but at the time, I didn't know. Reverend James E. Samuel was born and raised in Columbus. He went to Hunt High School not far from the Kerr McGee site. He's one of the many who was being impacted by the site's unknown poison at the time and still sees its impacts today, decades later. That's why he's serving as a voice for his community during the cleanup process. I'm here trying to help them put together a package that will satisfy the community, help them achieve their mission goals, Amen. And help change or turn around the negative side of what Kerr McGee left behind. Laurie Gordon is the director of environmental programs for the Multi State Trust. She's responsible for the work that's being done here at the Kerr McGee site. The company's purpose is to clean up the site and to make sure impacted areas are safe and healthy and make the area suitable for future use. Over 600 samples in the 2016 2017 timeframe. Um, over 200 of them out in the neighborhood to make sure that the residents were not being exposed to anything. And then just recently, we followed up in a couple of areas here. So far, eight residential properties have been identified that had contamination above the cleanup level. There's also still some creosote contamination in the storm drainage ditches, not including two of those that have been cleaned. 14th Avenue and 7th Avenue, there's one section of ditch that we need to complete. And then we did find a little bit of surface soil contamination in some properties on the east side of the site along the ditch and a few on the west side across the street from the, the property. And we've sent letters out to those residents letting them know that their yards are eligible for cleanup. Gordon says the overall cleanup process will take several years. The pine yard is a good example. It will take probably by the time we're done will have taken seven or eight months partially because it's rained so much. So a lot of the work that we do is weather dependent. But we're now identifying the kinds of cleanup that we're going to do on all the other parts of the property. And that process will take um, a couple years to get approved and designed and built. The little part we're trying to do now will redevelop this, this land into something that's, that's prosperous or profitable for all the people that still live over here. And, and we're not talking about a paycheck. We're talking about trying to bring some facilities in that will serve the community. Gordon says she wants residents to know that their opinions matter to them. And the group wants to know what residents' interests are and what their thoughts will be when the cleanup work is finally done. The EPA and DEQ also play a big role in the cleanup and have to approve plans throughout the process. Reporting live here in front of the Kermagee site, Jory Talley, WCBI News.